The National Broadcasting Company presents Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. From Hollywood, another authentic reenactment of a case transcribed from the files of the Texas Rangers. Starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles. And 50 men who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. From the files of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on facts. Names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Case for tonight, wheelchair killing. It is 8.40 p.m. May 1st, several years ago. Colby, Texas, near the edge of the great piney woods, is unusually crowded as several hundred young men from a nearby CCC camp have converged on the town to spend their monthly allowance. In the office of Sheriff Pete Saunders, the sheriff and his deputy are standing by in case any emergency should arise. Uh, uh, I don't know why I'm so groggy, Sheriff. Mm. Not even nine o'clock. For that tired rig, I don't think there's any need for you to stay any later. I can handle things. Why don't you go home? With all them young bloods in town? Oh, they seem to be all right. No sign of any fuss. I walked down Main Street a while ago. They were behaving. Yeah, just the same camp as new. It's the first payday they've had around here. A man can get pretty high with 30 bucks in his pocket. They don't get the whole 30 rake. They only get five of it. Government makes them send the rest home. Oh, I didn't know that. Sure, it's a whole idea. They... Where till I get this? Sheriff's office. Sheriff Sawyer speaking. You'd, you'd better go to the old house on Log Hill. You, you'd better go there right away. Old man Swain's place? Yes. Yes, hurry. Go there quickly and and bring a doctor. Why? What's the matter out there? Who is this? Well, I'm just calling. That's all. You better go right away. You better give me your name if you... Hello? 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 Yeah, hey, what's the matter? She hung up on me. Come on. Something wrong with old man Swain's place? Something plenty wrong or somebody's idea of a joke. Mile and a half out to Swain's and he hasn't got a phone. And that call must have come from someplace else, then. Here, yeah. see if you can trace it. Then pick up Macker and Carl and follow me out to Swain's. I'll get the doc on the way. <laughs> Finley Swain, a victim of rheumatoid arthritis, was found dead in his dilapidated home, seated in his wheelchair. An inquest was called and an autopsy ordered. He had not died from natural causes. The sheriff called for the help of a Texas ranger, and ranger Jace Pearson was assigned, joining the sheriff at the funeral home. Body's in here, Jace. Uh-huh. He's a pretty old man. Pressing 80. Crippled up bad the last 20 years or so. Hadn't been for that phone call, I'd have figured his heart just gave out. Guess the doc would have, too. Good thing you asked for a coroner's inquest. Let me see the autopsy report. Yeah, yeah. He uh, died about eight last night. Hmm. Ruptured spleen, concussion. Doc says he was beaten to death. Hmm, funny. No marks on the body. No, all the damage was inside. Whatever he was hit with, it didn't leave any marks on him. Length of rubber hose, maybe. Something like that wouldn't leave a mark. You find anything like that? Didn't have much chance to look, Jace. Maybe my deputies will run across something. No, I left three of them out at Swain's last night. Well, why three of them? I may need more than that when he gets around that the old man is dead place will be loaded with vultures. What do you mean? Well, it's kind of a funny thing, Jace. The old man was kind of peculiar, living off by himself in that big old house, not even a cleaning woman to help him. Started some crazy talk a long time back. Rumor got around that he had a lot of money stashed away at his place. You think there was anything to it? Nope, because I know what he was living on. Got a check for $70 every month from some insurance company. Annuity? Yeah. Hmm. Too bad everybody didn't know that. He probably killed by somebody trying to force him to tell where he hid the money people think he had. That could be a motive. On the other hand, might be other reasons for killing him that we didn't know about. I doubt it, Sheriff. When a man comes into a place to kill with nothing else on his mind, he does it fast. 
This meeting took time. Come on, I want to look at Swain's place. The sheriff was right about the vultures. If his deputies hadn't been on guard, the house would have been a shambles. One of the deputies came inside with us. At the old man's wheelchair? Yeah, hadn't been moved. That's where we found him sitting. My lab crew will be coming in from Austin. They can dust the chair for prints while they're going over the place. Hmm. What's this on the floor? Uh, where you stand there? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Felt a little crunchy when I walked across it before, like somebody spilled some sugar. Uh, it's not sugar. It's more like white beach sand. No beach sand around this country, Jay. Just the same. That's what it looks like. Lab boys can tell whether it is or not. Right near the old man's chair, too. He get around much? Outside, I mean? Best of my knowledge, he'd never wheel himself further than the front porch to get the sun. Oh, to get his food in. Reg can tell you that. We used to sit on the porch and flag down a passing car or truck, ask him to pick up things for him at the market. I stopped by often to get him things. <laughs> Had a red flannel shirt he'd wave. Spotted easy from the road. Let's look through the rest of the place. Hey, hey wait a minute. What is it, Jay? A few more grains of sand on the floor here. More of it right on into the kitchen. Let's go out back. There's nothing here, Jace. Just a stump field all the way back to them hills. Somebody's been out here, though. Look. Part of a shoe mark on the ground. Barely see the outline. The toe dug in deepest. Man must have been running. Only one thing wrong about the whole setup, Jace. That phone call I got was from a girl. It doesn't register as the kind of a killing that would be done by a woman. Besides, a murderer doesn't usually call in a report. Too bad you couldn't find out who made it. Well, at least we know it came from a payphone in the lobby of the Colby house. The desk clerk didn't notice anybody, though. I see. Well, let's spread out a little, see if we can cut across any more tracks like this one. Reg, you move off to my right about five paces. All right, Jase. I'll fan out on this side. Good. Well, let's move. All right. I'm getting some light tracks over here, but the ground's too hard. They're not very clear. You must be on the right trail. There's nothing at all over this way. Yeah, I'm going to blank you. Hold it. Hold it. You find some rag? Yeah. Yeah, you better come here. What is it? Man's sock. <laughs> it's more than just a sock. Knotted at the middle and heavy at the toe. It's full of sand. So that's where those grains of sand come from. That killer must have thrown that away while he was running, Jase. Huh? Here's a murder weapon, Sheriff. Now all we got to do is find the person who used it. The trail behind Swain's house petered out past the stump field, and we lost all trace a mile into the thick foliage of the piney woods. I sent the sock full of sand through to the Austin lab for examination. Meanwhile, a lab crew met me at the Colby funeral home and went over Swain's body. That sock must have been the weapon, all right, Jace. Look, just combed a few grains of the sand out of the old man's hair. A little more embedded in the scalp. The impact of the blows must have forced some of it through the sock weave. Must have. That's why you found traces of it on the floor. How you making out there? Don't know much yet, Sheriff. You check with the other lab men out at Swain's? Yeah. Usual jumble of smeared prints. Now, that may be a report from Austin. I'll get it. All right. Hello? Yeah, speaking. I've had Rig okay, checking on that ahead. sand, Jace. No firm in the area handles that grade. That's funny. Right. Isn't likely the killer came from far off. Why not? Well, talk about the old man's having money stashed okay, away is Andy, sort of a local I'll rumor. I'll tell him. Andy and Austin with a report from that sock. Is there an army camp around here any place? No, why? Uh, that sock is army issue. Oh, wait a minute. There's a new CCC camp up in the Piney Woods, Jace, about nine miles from here. Hey, they're civilian, but they get their clothes from army issue. Camps are run by army officers. More than 100 men up there. Yeah, and a good chance that one of them is the boy we're looking for. That rumor about Swain having money has been around for a long time. If somebody from the town was going to do him in, they'd have done it before this. Come on, Sheriff. Let's drive up to that camp. Sure. Well, it'd be better if we could borrow a truck from someplace. Why a truck? Old Logger's Road is the only one to the camp. High centers. Kind of rough on a passenger car. Especially one towing a horse trailer like yours. Well, I got charcoal in my trailer. Can't we cut straight through the woods on horses? It's a good idea. Save us time and a couple of miles. You got a horse at your place? Yeah, it's on the way. All right, I'll drive you out. Start from there. We 
got the sheriff's horse. I unloaded charcoal from the trailer, and we headed into the piney woods. As we drew near to the camp, we caught glimpses of men working in squads of four or five, and finally ran across one man alone and mounted. Fell on horseback ahead there, Jace. Can you see him? Yeah. Looks like a straw boss. Moving into a clear now. Oh, there! Hello! He's waiting for us. Come on, boy. Yeah, yeah. Charlie. He must be one of them fellas from the agricultural college. Understand they got four of them supervising. Have to have somebody who knows the woods. Most of the other camp boys are from the big cities. Yeah. You fellas looking for the camp? Oh, oh easy, Charlie. boy. Easy. Yeah, that's right. It's about three quarters of a mile off that way. You'll see the tents when you get over that rise. Who are you? Oh, my name's Joe Roberts, section leader. My name's Pearson. This is Sheriff Saunders. Oh, howdy, Sheriff. Oh. You uh, out here about something connected with that murder in town? How'd you know about that? Wasn't around town till this morning, and you're quite a ways off. Well, Major Beck told me about it when the truck brought him out from town this morning. Oh, the Major was in town all night? Yeah. He doesn't live at the camp. He just comes out days. No place out here for his wife and daughter. Wife and daughter, huh? Anybody else out here have women folk in town? Uh, no, why? I'm just curious. You know where the major and his family are living in town? Oh, sure, at the hotel. Colby House. That's where that phone call came from, Jace. Yeah, I know. Thanks a lot, Robert. So long. Sure. Better have a little talk with the major. You can say that again. Good boy. Go, no, Charlie. Come on, boy. In just a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. It's the Silver Jubilee on NBC. Every Friday evening, there's another stirring adventure series for Western fans on this station. Yes, every Friday, NBC brings you the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers, with the Queen of the West, Dale Evans. Make your date for thrilling listening with the Roy Rogers Show every Friday evening at this same spot on your dial. There's action and adventure in Paradise Valley when Roy Rogers rides the airwaves, and there's also a song or two by these wonderful Western entertainers, Roy and Dale. Be sure to hear them Friday. We continue now with Tales of the Texas Rangers, and today's case, Wheelchair Killing, an authentic story from the files of the Texas Rangers. Major Beck was regular army. In his early 50s, over age in rank, a gray, embittered man. His office was a field tent at the head of the company street. So, you think that old man was killed by somebody from this camp? We've got reason to think so. Because of a sock. Socks like that have been general issues since 1917. I don't like any accusations against my command, especially accusations based on such flimsy evidence. There's something else beside the sock, Major. I notice your company's street between the tents is paved with gravel. Well, what about it? Is that gravel bedded in beach sand? You can see it around the borders, can't you? Sure, we can see it. It's the same kind of sand we found in that sock that Swain was beaten with. There's no beach sand anyplace else in this area, Major. Where'd this come from? How do I know? An advanced cadre of engineers set the camp up. I suppose the sand was trucked in with other material. <sighs> All right. Everything you've found points to this camp. I should have expected something like this. What do you mean by that? No, what would I mean, Ranger? What can you expect from sidewalk bums? Bums don't work, Major. And the crews we pass seem to be working pretty hard. I have to spend my time with them. You don't. What time do your men come in from the woods? Four o'clock. All the clothing they have issued through your own supply? Yes. All listed and signed for. Good. They couldn't have lost much in a month. At four o'clock, I'd like you to call for an inspection of equipment. See if we can find somebody who's missing a sock. All sorts of equipment was missing. Shirts, extra shoes, mess kits. But there was only one man who couldn't account for a pair of socks. All right, Rendasso. In the tent. All right, all right. Look, Major, what kind of crime is it to lose a sock? There's a shortage on them or something? The ranger and sheriff will tell you. I, I thought you ranger guys was just something they made up for the movies. We've been around since long before there were any movies, Randazzo. Okay, so you're a cowboy detective. So find out who stole my socks. Don't be funny, young fellow. Look, must I ain't trying to be funny, but what are you all jumping on me, huh? I wash my socks, I hang them off the dry, and one of these dew drops puts his hooks on them. That makes it a federal case? Randazzo, a sock belonging to somebody in this camp was used to kill an old man. It was filled with sand from the company street and used as a blackjack. 
Hey, you mean that's how they knocked off that old nickel punch on Log Hill? Oh, you know about that. The whole camp knows about it. What are you looking at me? The guy that picked some age up told us about it when he brought the truck back this morning. Were you in town last night? We was all in town last night. We got paid yesterday. The major let us go in on a truck. What time did you come back to camp? When everybody else come back. Trucks picked all of us up again at midnight. Same place they dumped us out of Main Street, but a corner near that hotel. The Kobe house? That's the only one, ain't it? What'd you do while you were in town? Up to nine o'clock. I was having a hamburger in that place next to the bus depot. I was there from eight till ten. Mm, you must be a slow eater. It's a long time for one hamburger. Who cared about the hamburger? I was trying to pick up the blonde behind the counter. She keeps giving me the smile with all the teeth bit. I ask her what time she gets off. She tells me ten o'clock. So what happens? Five minutes to ten, she got a boyfriend comes to meet her. A guy eight foot tall. You know the girl he's talking about, Sheriff? Yeah, Lucille Mason. Must have been her husband met her. Her husband? How do you like that? Could she have been the one who made the phone call you got, Sheriff? Not a chance. The girl that called was a lot younger. I don't think you have any right to hold this man until you've checked on his story. We're not holding anybody, Major, until we've checked on a lot of things. All right, Randazzo, you can go. But don't leave this camp except with your work crew. Leave this camp, he says. From now on, I ain't even gonna leave my tent. I should have never left Brooklyn. Major... That goes for everybody out here. Don't let them use the trucks. Keep them in camp. You better stay here to make sure. My wife and daughter are in town. Well, I can't stop you from going home. But if you do, the sheriff will have to send deputies out here to keep the men confined to the camp area. I don't want civil authorities here. I'll stay. Thanks. Come on, sheriff. Let's get back to town. You know, Jace, I kind of got an idea. So have I. A girl's voice, young... Not from around here. And the major's daughter staying at the Colby house. I think he knows more than he's telling. Acts kind of funny. No, he's all right. Probably a pretty good man. Mm-mm. He hates his men. Because they're not what he's used to. But give him credit for one thing. He doesn't want any of them involved in this. If he had the authority to do it, he'd probably take that randazzo and hang him to the highest tree. But when he thought we might take the man in, he went to bat for him. Yeah, I see what you mean. Hey... There's that fellow Roberts we met riding in. The section leader. Yeah, giving our horses water. Good for him. Your horses are kind of thirsty. Yeah, thanks for taking care of them, Roberts. <laughs> That's all right. Say, how'd you make out with Randazzo? He seems to be all right. Hey, most of them are. <laughs> Major Beck doesn't like him, though. Well, that's his privilege. I guess he'd rather have some young army officers around so he could sort of handpick a son-in-law. This gal's pretty. She associate with any of the fellows here? Well, when the camp first opened, a fellow named O'Brien, a good-looking kid, better education than most of the others, he used to drive the major back and forth from town. Then, all of a sudden, he got somebody else. Put O'Brien on mess hall detail, took him off the trucks altogether. You know if O'Brien was seeing the girl? Nobody could have met her pretty often that first two weeks picking up the major. Well, the truck drivers get into town almost every day hauling supplies and things. Uh-huh. Well, thanks a lot, Roberts. Horses look like they had enough, Sheriff. Yeah. Come on, boys. So long, Roberts. So long. So long. Get yeah, up, Chuck. Come, Come on, boys. Come on. Well, Jase, what's our next move? Ride out of here to my car and then drive back to town. We're going to do Major Beck a favor. What kind of a favor? Just tell his daughter he won't be in town tonight and see if you can recognize her voice. <laughs> At the Colby house, we got a break. The major's wife wasn't in, but the daughter answered when we knocked at the door of her room. Who is it? Is that your mother? Sounds like the voice, Jess. Good. I got a message from your father, miss. Oh, just a minute. That's the voice, all right. Huh. What's the matter, miss? Sheriff and I can't look bad enough to make you go pale like that. Oh, I... I thought when you said... You had a message. It, it would be somebody my father sent from camp. What did he want you to tell me? Just that he won't be in town tonight. You mind if we come in, miss? We'd like to talk to you. Well, I, I have a lot to do, and, and I... We I, only I... want to know where you were between, say, 7 and 9 o'clock last night. I... We know that you were in the phone booth in the lobby at 8.40, because that's where you called my office room. Please, please don't talk in the hall. Come in. Were you out at old man Swain's house last night? Yes. Yes, I walked out there just before 8 o'clock. What for? To meet somebody. Somebody named O'Brien? Well, he didn't have anything to do with it. Johnny liked the old man. How'd you and your boyfriend come to pick Swain's place for your meetings? Because my father or 
Somebody might have seen us if we met in town. How'd this uh, Johnny get to know a crippled old man who never left his house? When he was driving one of the cab trucks, Mr. Swain waved to him from the porch one day. Johnny saw he was in a wheelchair, and he stopped to see what was wrong. The old man wanted some things from town, and after that, they got to be friends. Uh, that fits, Sheriff. Your deputy said Swain had flagged down a car or truck when he needed anything. All right, miss. Now, what about that meeting last night? Johnny got a lift from camp on, on the last truck in. After the early trucks came in, I started to walk out to swing, like I always did, so so that Johnny could catch up to me on the way, on the road out of town where nobody would see us walking together. Did he catch up to you before you reached Swain's? Yes. Yeah. And then when we got there and went in, we saw that the old man was slumped over in his chair. He raised his head just once and said something about not wanting to be hit again. And then he almost fell, but Johnny set him back in the chair. And then we couldn't get him to move again, and, and we got frightened, and, and since there was no phone, we came back to town. You both left the house together, by the front door. And, and then when we got back near town, we split up. I, I came back here to the hotel and, and called from the lobby. Well, we weren't even sure he was dead until we heard it was murder. I reckon you're going to have to come along with us. We'll send somebody out to get O'Brien. No, just a minute, Sheriff. Miss, yes. where does Johnny O'Brien come from, his home? Boston. City boy all his life? Yes. Oh, now my father's going to find out we're married. Married? Yes, we were married last week. Your father's going to find out all right, but not from us, from you. I think you better tell him. Come on, Sheriff. We're just going to leave her? For now. Come on. Jace, I know she sounded like she was telling the truth. She was telling the truth. You know anything to back that up? A few things. Whoever killed the old man bolted out the back door. One person running. Yeah? They found the old man conscious, still alive. So she says. And it fits. If the old man had died after the beating with no disturbance... Killard spent some time looking for hidden money. He didn't move things, left dust rings. He didn't because he had to run. That brings us back to the fellow with the missing socks, Randazzo. Yeah, he's not the one either. We're going back to the camp and talk to the men who drove those trucks in last night. We want the man who came into town on a truck and went back on foot. What we need is a missing passenger on the return trip. If there was a missing passenger. We followed somebody's trail all the way across Log Hill into the Piney Woods. Whoever it was kept going. They wouldn't have gone that deep if they were going to cut back to the road. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just somebody who'd been scared off like that would head for the camp and stir the town. Sure gives us a big bunch of suspects, though. No, it doesn't, Sheriff. What chance would a man from the city streets have if he tried to make his way to a camp nine miles deep in the piney woods? Especially on foot and at night, with no path to follow. It takes somebody who'd spend his life in open country. Only men who fill that bill are the camp section leaders. Yeah, and the truck drivers will be able to account for them. Out of the camp, the section leaders are bosses, and nobody forgets seeing a boss. It was 2 a.m. when we reached the camp and woke the major. He led us to the truck driver's tent. One of the drivers had the answer we were looking for. He'd hauled section leader Roberts into town Saturday night, but Roberts hadn't ridden back with him. We left the tent. Roberts sleeps in the last tent, the end of this line. Alone? Yes. As a section leader, he has a private tent. Hey, hold it a minute. Where does Randazzo sleep? The fellow was missing the sock. Uh, let me see. Uh, that tent right there. Let's wake him up first. What do you want Randazzo for, Jace? He's clear. I know it. But I want him to help us with something. We haven't got enough to make a case against Robert Stick. What's your plan? I'll tell you as soon as I get Randazzo out here. You know which bed he's in, Major? Yes, uh, first bed to the right as you go in the tent. Wait till I get him. Randazzo. Randazzo. One of them. Get up and come outside. Don't wake anybody. I can't come out without my pants. All right, slip into them. Well, I, I look up. I'm being pinched, am I? No, but we'll be able to make an arrest in a minute with your help. You mean you know the rat that put his hooks on that sock I was missing? That's right. Oh, just laid me to him. I'll feed him a mouthful of knuckles. Never mind that. Just do as I say. You ready? 
Ja, hier. Now, listen carefully. Here's what you do. I gave Randazzo the plan, and we went over with him to Robert's tent, ready to jump in if the plan worked. This is the tent. All right, Randazzo. We'll be right out here. No, you just leave that crumb to me. I hope he plays it right, Jay. Shh. Hey, Robert. Wake up, oh, you oh, crumb. What? Who is it? Who's in here? It's me, Randazzo. What are you doing in here? I'll come to talk with you. At this time of the night? Get out of here. Get back to your tent. Listen to me, you do drop. You'll talk to me right now or I'll go to town and my talk to a ranger. What do you mean? You know what I mean, you crumb. That sock was stolen from me. I saw you take it. Keep your voice down. What? Why would I take anything from you? That's what I wanted when I saw you. That's why I didn't say nothing. Then I found out, all right. Well, you crumb. If I couldn't have told him where I was when the old man was knocked off, I'd have been a pig. I don't know what you're talking about. Don't worry. I can keep quiet. I keep real quiet. All it's going to cost you is a hundred bucks. I haven't got a hundred bucks. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, guy had money hidden all over the joint. Everybody knew that. But I didn't get it. I'll oh, kill you, Ray. Right. So you open your mouth about me and I'll beat your brains out. You're ready. Yeah. Hey, that way through, you. Chief, we better get it. Yeah, come on. Yeah. All right, Roberts. Let him go. Grab him, Ranger. He killed that old man. He just told me. We heard what he told you. Try these cuffs for size. He's lying about those socks. I never had... You better any... shut up until you get a lawyer. You all right, Randazzo? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I'd have flattened him if you hadn't come in. Claiming Roberts is a prisoner, Major. Any objection? Mm, what objection can I have? He's not military personnel. You're the law here. Thanks. I didn't mean to hurt the old fool. If he'd only told me where the money was, I'd, I'd never... There wasn't gotten... any money, Roberts. The old man never had a dime. But everybody said that you he You can was... save your story for your cellmates at Huntsville, Roberts. Get your clothes on. Let's go. Harlan Roberts made a full confession to the brutal murder of aged and crippled Finley Swain. And the following year, he was sentenced to Huntsville Penitentiary for the rest of his life. Next week, Joe McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Joel McRae is currently seen starring in the Universal International Technicolor production, Cattle Drive. The cast included Tony Barrett, Bill Johnstone, Tom Tully, Mike Barrett, Frank Gerstle, and Tom McKee. Technical advisor was Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers. This story was transcribed and adapted by Joel Mercott, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keith. Hal Gibney speaking. It's the Silver Jubilee on NBC. Today, here are the big show broadcast from Paris and featuring such stars as Fred Allen, Josephine Baker, and your unpredictable hostess, Tallulah Bankhead. Then join in the fun with Phil Harris and Alice Fay as they bring you a half hour of mirth and music. Later, Theater Guild on the Air presents Casanova Brown with Diana Lynn, Dan Daly, and Kenny Delmar. Next, it's The Big Show. All this and Tallulah, too, on NBC.